George. He was taught how to oh, how to form oh, silver. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, By the way, oh, until oh, about our ambassador of misinformation, <laughs> it was only about ninety some years ago when the common person, at least in Oklahoma, first paid any federal taxes. Huh. Fed, until the well, 16th Amendment, there were no federal taxes sure. on income. Let me put it that way. That's, that's there was some years ago. Yeah, okay. And so, but when we got that passed, it was under the guise of it's a millionaire tax and only the millionaires. <laughs> well, were it was so, it tax. was, it was that initially. Yeah. And yeah. that was how it was sold to get it started. Yeah. But then what they did was the millionaires came in and had the money to lobby. Yeah. And they, <laughs> and they said, okay, we, we want, we want, uh, exemptions and we, we want both. you to start we want right. you to start taxing a little bit lower and a little bit lower so now everybody it has lower to taxes to on the upper yeah. echelons and increase yeah. it's all taxes are middle class but if you look right. at and I'm going to ask Holden this when you look at the constitutionally mandated role of government most of it should fall under the state purview is that not right the federal government should be very limited oh they're extremely limited and so yes. the the taxes that are paid would probably be considerably less. Depends what your appetite is for military. Well, I, I say, and it's just a rough guess, but about between 70 and 80 percent of our federal tax bill is unconstitutional. Actually, of your state, state tax bill as well. Mm -hmm. um, because they're charging for things that they don't have the right to force you well, to. Isn't there an argument for? that the Supremacy Clause supersedes the Tenth Amendment and that the Civil War settled that? Is that essentially the argument? Uh, you can just run over it. No, this would be a yeah. whole show we can get into yeah. incorporation. Yes or no? Okay, no. But, no, 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 no. <laughs> but then we Sorry. say we'll never get high speed rail it. unless we raise taxes even more. So what say you? Well, that may, that may well be the case because there would be that money. But the, what they need to do is they need to sell it not as a tax but as a voluntary uh, bond measure, if you will. A bond un, measure. Un, under which... There is no indebtedness, but you sell it, it, you know, instead of instead of an indebted bond, it's kind of like um, putting it on layaway. That's, so you'd save up the that, money. That's not a good enough answer. The right answer for me is since it's not a core service of government, it should be paid well, by the customers, right? Well, yes, it also shouldn't be administered by the government. It right. should be it should be private who then goes out. And, and gets voluntary investors yeah, to invest in it. I agree. And, okay. and no railroads would exist then if government didn't pay for them. Uh, they they well, did prime the pump. Well, they, they did prime the pump. They did prime the pump. And that was where exist. a lot of the money came from. But a lot of the money was foreign investment. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the money for railroads came from Great Britain uh, because Great Britain started railroad industry and everything. Yeah, so one taxation. Found. God bless it. Yeah. But, God save the queen. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but but the thing is that that we have to we have to start rearranging our mindset of, about these things and and look not look at the spending and then the collection of it as well. Is the collection is what they're spending on something that that is something that should be a voluntary. Yeah, does it fall under operating procedure or not? So yeah. much of it doesn't because that's where we are today. Yeah, and, and we're right, sitting on the you welfare state. You're off to the races. My yeah. argument when they wanted to get that train high speed going from Tulsa to Oklahoma City, I said, no, just take down all the speed limits on the turnpike. Well, I want an Autobahn, by God. Yeah. Let's just do the Autobahn. Cheaper and faster. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Governor Stitt's getting us closer. Yeah. <laughs> How's Amtrak <laughs> working? Yeah. That's yeah. They saw Amtrak and they said, man, that's working out great. Can we get yeah. one of those in Oklahoma? Yeah. So as we tie this off, if you're here yeah. with us still now, I'm Tom McKay, your host for 3D Politics. David D'Ambroso, David Oldman, David Van here with all things most important in Oklahoma. Uh, you know, I, got, I really, though, do want to tie us back down to the classroom and the teacher. Let's say there's a teacher and she's being asked to enforce, support, or teach something that is immoral in some way. So, so we know that if, if, we're, if the teacher was told, teach the children to hate and kill, we would know, okay, well, that's clearly wrong. So right. we should draw a line right there. And then on the other side of it, you said, teach the kids two plus two is four. Okay. Now, somewhere in between two plus two is four and hate and kill. 
there's going to be a line where the teachers have to find, they have to decide, mm -hmm. is this right? Should I teach the children this? But you don't have to think at all if you're yeah. just following orders. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> checkmate. I remember my 10th ten, grade biology required everyone. There were two teachers. Uh, I had Mr. Allen, and then there was... Uh, the other guy, the other guy just, you know, they got to chapter two is evolution. He says, you know what? You guys have all heard this thing. I don't agree with it. Uh, these theories in there and they're teaching us facts. We're just going to skip that all together. Let's move ahead. <laughs> wow. he did. Yeah. He had tenure, but he got to do it. And, and now none of you can conduct scientific experiments. I know. Because yeah. evolution by the mechanism of natural selection is literally the foundation of all science. Yeah. That's what I hear all the time. So, when so, even, the so you don't think of controversy around phonics. I mean, it's literally like phonics, so, so it's not like It doesn't work ed, for everybody. But even if it doesn't work for everybody, if the teacher <laughs> finds Now there's value, public education. If the, if the one teacher in a second grade classroom finds value in phonics, but she's told by the government schools, don't use it. That's a problem. You're right. And Correct. Yeah, and, and this is a problem because we aren't teach we aren't really allowing our educators to be professionals in many Bingo. ways. Yeah, we're not allowing yeah. the teacher to teach. You know, I exactly. remember uh, exactly. one of my clients, I was doing some work on her house. Her husband's a professor at uh, University of Tulsa. She had just retired from Tulsa Public Schools. And uh, a year later, I see her working for Holland Hall just down the road here. Hmm. And private school, I said, I thought you were retired. She's not retired from public school. <laughs> I'm at the point where I got my pension now. I just can't go back to work in public schools. I got to work in private schools. Right. And so and then a couple of years later, she's over at Casha Hall. And I said, so are you enjoying teaching anymore? She says, oh, it's night and day. I finally right. am treated like a profession. It's like an epic. Right. Yeah. Look at their results. The yeah. name is appropriate. They pay teachers more, and yeah. the teachers have more autonomy. Yeah. Everyone loves it more. The students love it, exactly. and the teachers love and it. And well, the teachers are allowed to customize the approach with each child. And which is exactly what is necessary, yeah. and that's why homeschooling works so well. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, the state apparatus is trying to crush Epic as go, we speak. Go to my Facebook page. Go to my page, Facebook page and scroll down on the wall, and you'll see a, a family that has like seven or eight kids, and every single one of them has at least one degree by the from college by the time they would be normally graduating from high school. <laughs> and and the reason, and the way it worked was that something happened with their first child and she was having a problem in, in school. And I can't remember what the problem was. And so they decided they were going to bring her home. She liked to learn. She, well, that was one thing. It may have been bullying or something, but I don't remember. Anyway, the, the point is that they, that she, the, the daughter soon outpaced the parents and their ability to, you know, their keep knowledge up base to keep to up. Yeah. And so they started looking for outlets. Yeah. And so they looked for an outlet and they f ended up finding the local college. Yeah. And so they started putting her into college and she excelled. Right. Well, they found that every child could do the same thing and they just allowed the kids yeah. to go their own direction. And so every kid has gone off on their own direction, found their own way, but they all have gone and one kid, he's 19, he says he's a slacker because he only has two degrees. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is, the, this is the ultimate Pygmalion effect. I mean, if yeah. you treat your children like they're brilliant, guess what? Yeah. Well, it, and, uh, it's not just that. It's, it's giving the kid and letting the kid blossom with the kid's own interests. The problem, uh, really, with public schools, it's like learn to read, read to learn. Okay. And that's the only way you can learn. Let me comment here. Audio and visual. Let me comment out here. Frustrates the heck out of people who are institutional in their thinking. They'll ask me about my kids. So what grade is your oldest in? I say, depends. What subject? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's driving them nuts. Because kids <laughs> don't have to learn every yes. subject at the same rate. Exactly. It's just like this family you're talking about, the kid may be excelling in sciences, but you get over here in another subject, and they may be struggling. I'm still I'm so sorry, Someone allows you to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the thing is that... You can only count to two genders. Just, I'm just saying. Well, you are really... I'm really high, funny. Yeah. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the son of two teachers. Oh, yeah. no. And, uh, and, <laughs> and, and How disrespectful of you of your parents' and, legacy. And I see both, what this is. Both of them socialists. 
It's a rebellion. And, and so the the thing is that that education should not be should not be a chore. No. It's laborious, but it should not. It should be fun. It should be enjoyable. It should yeah. be something that's good. We make it and No, my parents yeah. did teach that. It would, it became a chore all too often. Yeah. But but there were so many things that we did that were educational and fun, and I learned so much more from those experiences. Yeah. And the, the having to labor through them was good. Yeah. That is that is the way homeschooling works. It's yeah. the way Epic works. It's the way any good well, teaching. You know what? I, I'll works. tell you. When I if I was screwed up by recess in public school as a kid, what was my punishment? I got to write an essay. What did that tell me? <laughs> the writing is a punishment. Yes. Now I publish a newspaper and I'm like, wait a minute, this is supposed to be. You're always in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Now he's doing it to himself. Yeah. Self flagellation. But, but you're right. We have, and I remember last night I was talking to my oldest son, who is a marketing mm -hmm. analyst uh, with a pretty large national corporation, and he's had really no college. And uh, we were talking about, you know, what did you lose? What did you gain by straight homeschooling and I said this I said you know I was in public school and every day not a day went by without me being told what I can't do I said I wanted to focus with you kids on you guys finding what you can do <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. right. you know and and that's the thing kids have drive if they can take ownership of it you know well, and that's what freedom yeah. allows. <laughs> well, the system drives it out of them. I mean, it's uh, we've got an old, antiquated, you know, 18th, 17th century Prussian education model, which essentially, mm -hmm. it's just discipline. You yeah. do what I say because I said it. Yeah. And it's this whole thing, where do you think for yourself as an educator? There's not a lot of room for that because, yeah. I mean, you might remember, Prussia is part of a, a region of a country where people said, eh, to throw kids in an oven because someone told me to. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you. Folks, if you've got a kid that's ready to drop out of school, especially the high school kids, and they can't stand being all day locked up inside, make a deal with them. Call Epic, and, and Epic will set them up so it's three hours a day, and they're taking a full load, the rest of the day is theirs. They get the three hours done. That's what homeschooling does when it's done right. You get done in the morning, you got the whole afternoon. Well, and the thing is that, that education is a 24-7 experience. Yes. And, and how, many, how many kids get, it, get educated only at school? And parents ignore them uh, yeah. or worse. Yeah, we think it's, well, it's the public school. You know, you're talking in mixed company here. <laughs> well, but the point is that, that how many, I mean, you're not one of those parents. Well, you say that, but when I'm not in the room, I am. What I'm saying is, if I weren't here right now and you made the same comment, you wouldn't. It was be a generalization. You got yeah, a good point. You know, well, no, 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 no. I'm not talking. I'm saying I'm you're not, sensitive you're not to that a, because you're of not the a attacks. parent. You're not a parent that ignores his kids or or shoves his kids aside when right, they get it's home. It's not a general problem with parents. Parents are the pre-responders that respond before the first responders respond. Yeah. I mean, parents are the first uh, pre-responders. Yeah. So I'm very super sensitive to the parents are bad. Okay. I'm Tom, like, no. Let me ask parents this. are good. Do you, do you and your wife, one or the other, usually make it to parent-teacher conferences? Yes. Okay. This public schools in my part of town, which isn't a great part of town, folks, rarely do parents show up. Right. Well, right. my, my mom said that she could tell the students that would, would succeed and the students that wouldn't by by knowing the parent involvement. That's and true. and that was it. That was that was the key difference between successful and non successful. Let's kids. remember the child makes up their own mind no matter how good the parents are. Yeah. Well yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. I mean, what I'm saying is the child is a variable that operates without necessarily input from nature or nurture. I remember well, why it's so, oh, so no oh, matter right. how yeah. good the parents are, and he, oh, right, but and if they show not, up to every meeting, that's yes, true. That, yes. there's no guarantee, but yet there was a famous man that once said, <laughs> raise up a child in the way he should go, that's and what right. is old and left that's right. Actually, that same man just didn't mean quite the way it's translated. <laughs> um, how many but, lives did he have? Uh, tell us the dirty well, no, story. No, actually, that same man is one that was raised up right and then went and fell away. <laughs> yeah. But the, so, I think Jeffrey Dahmer's so parents are very charming. But she was a good cook. No, actually, actually a what it means is that if you leave a child in his foolishness, 
Yeah. When he grows up, he's not going to depart from it. That's what yeah. it means. I, I'm not trying and to counter so. the fact that some bad parents are bad parents. What I notice in today's society, because of the encroachment of the authority of parents through the public schools, parents have been trained, oh, you know, you send them to school. You know, right. I mean, no, we, and, we, and, we and 40 I do, years of there training is, parents there are, to not take care of their own damn kids. You, well, right. That's part of the reason for this broadcast, mm -hmm. is to help re-educate parents and uh, you know youngsters who are coming up and going to be parents one day, so that they aren't in that same of mind, same frame of right. mind, to know that there really are alternatives out there that they can yeah. and do. And know we'll have succeeded when we get deplatformed. Well, I think, yeah. I think, <laughs> I, are we? Are we?